The time I spent as the director of the CECOM Software Engineering Center, which was from 2001 to 2007. Um, the largest software engineering center in the Department of Defense. Uh, we were doing about a billion and a half dollars of business annually when I left. And uh, it was just a great organization. We were really a mini CECOM, a microcosm of CECOM, in the sense that uh, we did the complete life cycle for software. We developed software, engineered it, fielded, logistically supported it. And we were involved in every business area that CECOM was involved in. Uh, all of the tactical mission areas as well as all of the business software that, that the Army runs its business on. And it was just a great organization, I got to work with uh, great people, and, uh, and I had the, uh, the opportunity to lead it. So I was able to set the vision, set the goals, celebrate the successes, fix the problems uh, uh, with, uh, with little or no, with little oversight, let's say. Uh, I was able to lead that organization on a day-to-day -day basis and that was, a, that was a, great, uh, a great time in my career. It was, it was a 37-year career, uh, a wonderful, charmed career, in my view, uh, that went by in a heartbeat. Um, I started out as a GS-5 budget analyst intern uh, at Fort Mama, and uh, at that time, I was hoping if I, if I could just make it to GS-9 or maybe GS-11, uh, I'd, be good, I'd be good to go. That was my long-term plan at that time, but uh, things started to evolve. I had a lot of great uh, supervisors and mentors along the way that uh, I look back in pride that I was part of that team, part of that team of really renowned uh, scientists, engineers, logisticians, acquisition professionals who uh, over the course of the years invented and delivered such world-class uh, C5 ISR uh, products and services uh, anywhere anywhere, anytime, any place on the planet. It was just, I'm just so proud of being part of that. The number one is I would say, make sure that in your own area of technical expertise, uh, you gain profound knowledge and skill. Spend the time uh, to become expert technically in your field. And then secondly, while you're doing that, Spend some time improving your communication skills. I think that's uh, just tremendously important and getting more important in this day and age uh, every day. Uh, you need to be able not only to perform the work, do your job, but be able to communicate to others, maybe not so technical as you, uh, the importance, the operational importance, the technical importance, uh, the business importance of the work that you're doing. And as you become a leader, being able to communicate to those you are leading. Uh, what's your vision? What are your goals for the organization? Communicating your expectations to each individual person that's working for you and with you. Uh, critiquing them when necessary, helping them along. Uh, those are the things that I would say you need to concentrate on as you, as you look toward your future as a potential leader. In the uh, early 1990s, we were during Desert Storm. Uh, we were at Fort Monmouth, and the 513th Military Intelligence Brigade was headquartered at Fort Monmouth at that time, and they deployed. And now it was time for their return. And uh, when they reached the Monmouth County line, just about every piece of fire and first aid apparatus within the county, I think, uh, was, was in formation to uh, bring them back, to Fort, lead them back and escort them back to Fort Monmouth. And then when they finally got, and we knew they were coming, uh, when they finally got to the gate of F Fort Monmouth, which is on Route, US uh, Route 35 in New Jersey, uh, Route 35 was closed for about an hour as this huge procession of vehicles and finally the chartered buses with the 513th came in. And people were just lined up in the streets. Uh, uh, I can feel it just right now talking about it. It was just a wonderful experience and brought home so profoundly 
uh, what CECOM's bottom line was then and still is today, uh, the, the warfighter. And then fast forward, finally cased the command colors in a ceremony at Fort Monmouth on the parade ground on Greeley Field at Fort Monmouth. There were about 2,000 people there. We had invited every commanding general and PEO who had been stationed at Fort Monmouth uh, over the course of time, and so many of them showed up. Uh, and I was lucky enough, uh, General Strong at the time was the commanding general, and uh, he allowed me to give the keynote speech that day in front of 2,000 people uh, and basically just go through the accomplishments of each one of those commanding generals who was there in attendance and, and talk about the commanding general and about our future and uh, it was just a, a wonderful experience and a wonderful day that I'll never forget. The greatest challenge that I had to uh, face uh, personally as a leader was uh, retaining mission continuity uh, prior to and then during uh, the uh, base realignment and closure move to, to Aberdeen. You know, we planted the flag here, so to speak, at Aberdeen. I was able to pull people down uh, while General Vi at Fort Monmouth was pushing them down. And, but meanwhile, as I said, the op tempo uh, just never quit, and the thing that I, to this day, am amazed at is how the workforce, those who remained, they kept their uh, eye on the ball, they understood the warfighter out there doesn't care whether we're at Fort Monmouth or Aberdeen, they care that they get their stuff, and they care that we're supporting them, uh, and we did, and the, the workforce did, and uh, I've, I've always been uh, just so amazed and impressed uh, at how well we were able to maintain that mission continuity.